everyone, welcome back to Backstage Pass, a podcast brought to you by the CPCA Advising Office. We'd like to welcome you back. It's Friday. It's a good day. Uh, yeah, so today's guest, super exciting, as always. I'm super excited. How about you, Sarah? Very, very excited. I love this guest. <laughs> super exciting. I'm so pumped. Today's guest is a junior theater major in the acting concentration, also earning her minor in music. She wears many hats at Temple University. She's also the production manager for Temple's Theater Side Stage, VP of Alpha Psi Omega Honors Fraternity, and president of the a cappella group Vibrato, which is an awesome name. We are so excited to welcome Danny Coates to our podcast today. Danny, how are you doing? I'm doing so great. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. And as always, I'd like to introduce Sarah. Sarah, how are you doing on this fine day? I'm doing wonderfully. How about you, Ben? I'm kicking, you know, kicking back, chilling. I'm just trying to get through, you know, the semester like everyone else. But you know what? That's okay because we're all going through it. It's a good semester. I can feel it. The rest of the semester is going to be awesome. But today we got Danny Coates, so it's even better right now because we're going to talk about some bomb stuff, and I'm so excited. So first and foremost, uh, Danny, we like to talk a lot about Temple because obviously we are a Temple-affiliated podcast, so we like to you know get to know a little bit more about you and your experiences with Temple. Um, and because you are in the realm of theater, the first thing that we'd like to ask is, what is your favorite Temple uh, show that you've attended Oh, that I've attended. Um, I think that the best one that I saw was actually last February, like late February, right before everything was about to shut down. I saw Love, Love's Labor's Lost, and that was absolutely one of my favorite musicals. It was a Shakespeare musical, but it also had like pop rock elements to it. And it was probably one of the funniest productions that I've ever seen and one of the craziest productions that I've seen here so far. Very cool. Very cool. Who was in that one? Um, I had a couple friends that are musical theater majors. So um, like Jordan Chaw was playing one of the leads. Um, Lauren Esser was also playing one of the leads. Um, Kodiak Thompson, who I absolutely love so much, was also playing one of the leads. So, yes, <laughs> just a lot of people that I really am like proud of and like am very fortunate to have in my life or were able to be in that too. So it was nice. <laughs> oh, very cool. Very cool. Uh, how about in Philadelphia in general? What What's your favorite show that you've seen in philadelphia anywhere in philadelphia could be west philly could be north philly could be south philly anywhere what's your favorite show that you've seen this one's always hard just because there's so many shows that i have seen and temple does a really great job of making sure that they send students everywhere so they can see all of the different shows but my roommate and i actually got to go see spongebob squarepants the musical and that has to be my favorite show Yo! that i've seen ever <laughs> are you kidding it was amazing. We got like student discount tickets too. It was it was the best time of my life. Whoa, whoa, whoa. First of all, when were they in Philadelphia? I didn't it even was, know that was a thing. It was late December of last or two years ago now, I guess. Okay. So that would have been December twenty eighteen, right? Or twenty nineteen. Twenty nineteen. What how did I miss that? <laughs> I would have, I would have so have gone seeing that. I've been on such a big SpongeBob kick recently. Maybe right? it's just me trying to reminisce on my childhood and, you know, remember better days instead of growing up. Um, but <laughs> how did I miss that? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. It was such a good experience. It was so nice because like we made an entire day out of it. We got like Wawa beforehand too. Oh, so classic. it was, it was great. That's so good. <laughs> oh, so wait, did they like, dress the actors like in the actual like costume so like spongebob was an actual sponge or was it like well it's cool because they used like all of the elements of the characters but they didn't actually have to um i guess dress them up like sandy herself didn't have like the big dome on her head but she had an afro instead and that was really cool and then like spongebob oh, okay. was still wearing like the suspenders and everything and then patrick had his hair all up and like a mohawk but it was like trying to make the uh you know star Starfish head shape still. yeah yeah <laughs> Yo, that's awesome. I'm so mad I missed that. Jeez. But that's okay. Maybe some other time they'll come around again. I One can hope, at least. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, Temple's a fairly big campus. I mean, I, I'll i put it like this. When I moved to Temple, I thought it was going to be bigger than it actually was. And then once I got around, it felt pretty small to me. And I was like, oh, like, which is not a bad thing at all. It's just like, oh, there's like a lot of places in this bigger city. Um 
But I'm curious, with all the places that you could go, obviously you need to rehearse, you need to go over lines, or maybe you need to practice with other uh, actors. Where is your go-to rehearsal spot on campus? Oh, well, I guess I want to say that now my go-to rehearsal spot is right outside of the library. Um, I'm actually fortunate enough to have been scene partners with Sarah for one of them. And that was probably like our best rehearsal that we had. And we were just like <coughs> yelling at each other in front of the library, which was cool. Yes. That, um, I think that my favorite go-to rehearsal spot, honestly, it has to be Ritter. Just because there's so much that you can do in Ritter and we're already being in that room for so long that like you know it, your way around it so much so i definitely want to say that ritter you know what we've done enough interviews to where i can confidently say i think ritter seems like the best place to go for any theater student i just feel like every time we've interviewed like a theater alum or student they've always been like ritter 100 percent. that's where you need to go mm -hmm. i yeah. don't think i've ever been there I, it's I think the magic of Ritter. You get it's like it's like what Paley, like the upper floors of Paley used to be. Like you go in there and you get lost for hours, and you're just wow. in. You're just forced in that room to do your work, and it's it's the magic of Ritter. It that really sounds is. magical. <laughs> I've had so many different things just going on that Ritter can just kind of be morphed into whatever it is that you need for it. I've had like different acting classes, but also was like helping sage manage an entire show that all took place in Ritter. So, oh my gosh, so much stuff. So Ritter is really like the all in one package deal building on Temple's yeah. campus. Wow. Oh my gosh. I have to check it out. Sarah, you're going to have to take me when everything opens up again. <laughs> I mean, if you do see it, you wouldn't guess it at first glance. You'd be like, what are these funky shaped rooms? I don't understand what's going on, but you get a lot of stuff done. So, <laughs> Well, you know what? I'll take your word for it. From from a non-major perspective, I will take your word for it. Everyone go to Ritter. If you don't go to Ritter, you're you're just dumb. <laughs> so stupid. Uh, but anyway, um, you are a junior at Temple. Um, so you've had a lot of experience on Temple's campus and going to, you know, classes and whatnot. So out of all the classes that you've taken, what's been your favorite one? Oh, this one, it's, it's hard to say. Um, I took class last year uh acting three with miss cheryl williams but also with her husband eric kramer and i think that that was one of the most fun classes that i've taken just because it pushed me so far out of my comfort zone i don't do shakespeare on a normal basis but that was all that the class was and being able to just be in the same room as cheryl and like have her push me but also be like oh you're so sweet baby doll it was it was great <laughs> um and I also took musical theater scene study my sophomore year and that was really fun because I like singing but it wasn't something that I was regularly doing so it was nice to just be able to do some musical theater songs also very nice very nice what was your favorite Shakespeare that you had to do I got to perform Hamlet and I did that for my final but I also got to do it for the best of undergraduate showcase and um it was an emotional piece, and I'm like, I'm not a man, but I still got to portray that part because Cheryl was like, I don't care. Do what you want. And I was like, this is what I want to do. So it was it was great that I wasn't like in the fine or confounded by anything, and I just kind of got to run free with the creativity in that. That's, a, that's awesome. How was that like challenging to step in a role that, I mean, people just know it to be a man, really, but to step into a role like that where you have that creative freedom, was that difficult at first or was that just something you stepped in? You're like, I know exactly what I'm doing. I think it was definitely difficult at first, but as soon as I like finally got into the swing of things and we had to do a lot of like text analysis for each of the pieces that we were doing. And as soon as I got that under my belt, it made it so much easier. Like I know for a fact that as soon as I started saying some of those lines, people were like, oh, we've heard this a thousand times, but I'm like, well, you haven't seen my version of it. So I would love for you to go ahead and see that instead. I think that's an amazing way to put it. You know, because that gives it a nice, fresh take, you know, and I i mean, I can confidently say I wish I was there to see it because I've seen Hamlet multiple times since high school. So, like, I know it and it's like, eh, yeah, you, you kind of get the gist of it. But to see it from your perspective and how you portrayed it, that is refreshing. It sounds very refreshing, you know? Mm hmm. Yeah, so that's that's really cool. I I appreciate that a lot, actually. Thank you. <laughs> um, So. With being at Temple for the past two and a half years, pushing three years at this point, with which scares the gajibas out of me because, my gosh, I don't want to leave. Um, 
But with the two and a half years that you've been here, it seems like you have a long resume of different organizations you've been a part of. Could you tell us a little bit more about these organizations? Yeah, um, I'm going to start with uh, Vibrato. That is our musical theater acapella group. Um, I started out as the secretary in that group, and then I was the vice president of the group, and now I'm going on, I think, my fourth semester as the president of the group. I'm, like, trying to count, but I've kind of had, like, well-adjusted years, but it actually was not a acapella group when I got to Temple. And um, one of the people that I um, met my first semester here, she actually started the group and we were doing some things like Seasons of Love from Rent and just a bunch of other different musical theater songs. And then um, I started trying my hand at like arranging music. We did Wait For It and now we're kind of just going up and up and up. And right now we're a competitive acapella group and we didn't start out that way. So we're going to ICCAs in Whoa. Uh, like two weeks. So Whoa. there's that. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. That's, and you guys just started from a couple years ago? Yeah, it's really cool because they're trying, or ICCAs is trying to make everything really accommodating right now. So we're trying to make sure that like, uh, our video is like COVID safe, but it's also really creative in whatever way that it is. Um, so we're doing like a lot of just self taping, but then we have people behind the scenes kind of like editing and mixing everything. And it was just really cool to get to this point because we had to audition to still get into it. But a lot of the videos that we used were old videos and like videos from when we were still first starting out. And it was really cool to see that like that group who we are not today was still really good and good enough to get into the competition season. So, yeah. <laughs> That's sweet. I've always been an outsider of acapella groups because one, I sing, but I'm not good. Or I'll put it like this. I'm not good enough to where... I could be, be confident enough to be like, oh, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna join an acapella group <laughs> because you you've seen the movies. Um, what's the Pitch Perfect, right? Mm -hmm. That's the yeah, that's like the big acapella movie. Like, they make that look so easy, but it is so hard. Is do you find the same thing when you like? Or do you guys just naturally sound like unbelievable? Because I I assume that's what you guys sound like. And I assume because every acapella group I have ever seen in person, I'm just like they sound like that, like. <laughs> It's not just a movie thing. That's actually what they sound like. Is it hard? Like it's it's really difficult. I mean, like we not only have to arrange the music ourselves so that it sounds good on paper, but then we have to make sure that it sounds good in our voices. And that's a whole other ball game because something that I write, I personally might not even be able to sing. So then we're sitting there trying to edit everything and just try and make sure that it all sounds cohesive and then like there's only so many things that you can do with the notes and then we have to add the dynamics and add the timing and add all of these different layers and everything too. So it's a lot more work than it goes into. And there have definitely been moments where it's been less than perfect. <laughs> well, you know what? I honestly, you could probably put me in that room and you guys could mess up and I'd be like, no, 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 no. Like that was really good. Keep going. You know, <laughs> cause it, it's just, I, I find them acapella groups just fascinating. I think, you know, the amount of put uh, the amount of work that is put into, you know, those songs and those groups is just unbelievable. So I commend you for that. Like, <laughs> seriously, that's a really hard task. But uh, what about uh, let's talk about Alpha uh, Psi. Uh, what is it? Alpha Psi Omega Honors Fraternity. How long have you been a part of that? Um, so I started my sophomore year. You have to have at least two semesters of theater as a major under your belt. And then I believe it's three semesters under as a minor. So, um, I started just kind of as a member, just a regular member. Um, I remember that they were doing like raffles and kind of like big fun events that they were like promoting at practicum and everything. And I was like, oh, that's something that I want to be a part of. And it's an honor service fraternity and we get to do like community outreach. I remember last year we were trying to kind of work with a middle school or elementary school, sorry. Um, and we were trying to do like costuming for them and kind of help build their sets and everything and work with them, which was really cool. Um, we do a lot of fundraising for the local community, but it's also just really nice because the theater community is so big that I don't necessarily get to see everybody, but everybody is welcome in Alpha Psi Omega. And it's nice that I get that connection with them and I get to see all the things that everybody is doing. That just sounds super nice. Like, I... 
I feel like I'm talking to like the nicest person on earth right now. I just feel like everything she said. It's true. So far, it's true. <laughs> everything that you have said so far, I've just been like, wow, I'm like really jealous of her right now. Like I want to, I want to do this stuff. Like I want to be in an acapella group, but I'm not good enough for that. You can come no. on now. <laughs> oh, you haven't seen me sing though. <laughs> we've been trying. We've been trying to get Ben to audition for the theater shows. He's a he's a class. I'm not kid. good. You know what? I just literally speaking of me acting, which is a topic of disgust um i i last night literally my one roommate who i went to high school with and we did theater in high school we just watched a video like just just for you know fun and games just went on youtube found the video and was like oh let's just watch it for a little bit and like right when i got on stage i was like oh <laughs> oh i'm i'm not funny nor am i good like i was that's I was never playing. a good idea don't yeah. go back and watch those <laughs> don't don't go back don't uh -oh. back pedal <laughs> but i did and i had to but the funniest part of me going back to those videos is um so I, for some reason that page had a surge of views so like the one show i was in i was in um legally blonde and the, sh the one show that we put... I was Emmett, if that means anything. Yeah, it does. <laughs> uh, okay. And uh, the the one show that was up with me in it has like 20,000 views. And I was like, oh, that's cool. I wonder like what the comments say and whatever. And all of the comments are just so... Some of them are just like, oh, wow, that's so cute. Oh, this is so good. And then other ones are just so dumb. <laughs> like... Man, that Ella and uh, Emmett, they go together real good in real life. And I was just like, oh, please stop. That's weird. I don't want to look at this. There was a, there was one guy or one comment with, and they had a Dwight Schrute picture as their profile. And it said, Emmett gives me BDE. And uh, I'm not going to say what BDE is on air, but I responded to that comment saying, thank you. I try. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. I think I I think that was the comment that made me think, you know what, theater might be up in my future. <laughs> that was the one. That was it. That's the confidence booster right there. But yeah, it's cute. It's fun. It's whatever. Um, yeah, enough about me though. It's it's, it's dumb. Um, so I hear that you have been working with uh, Philadelphia young playwrights on a uh, candles at the Arden. How has that been? That sounds like insane. Yeah, that was one of the craziest experiences that I've ever had. Um, we closed um, January of 2020, which was insane because there was I was starting classes at the same time that we were doing tech week. So I wasn't in my classes for about like two weeks while we were still doing tech and I was performing in front of high school audiences, but then also public audiences at the exact same time. And I was working with Philadelphia professionals and I was working with a student playwright at the same time. And there was just so much stuff that was happening, but it was Whoa. honestly one of the best experiences of my life. <laughs> so how does that work with classes? Like you just completely didn't go just because you had this commitment or was it like you went but like you just had the camera off and then like you were there or like how did that work yeah well it was a lot of um me having to email my professors before the semester had even started and like hey I have this prior commitment <laughs> that I'm gonna have to be doing so I wouldn't be there for some of the classes but they all sent me like the work that I would be missing and everything like that so that uh you know I would go down there I would do all of that stuff but then I would come back to classes whenever it was necessary that I did it so. got it got <laughs> it so how much time did something like this take up um we started well, if we backtrack even more, I went to auditions and callbacks within the same two weeks. So I auditioned, I had my callback and they were like, whoa, we want you. And I was like, okay, I want to be here too. Great. <laughs> um, and then we started rehearsals uh, December, like mid-December, but then we all had off because it was like also Christmas week and everything like that. So we did rehearsals for a week, then we left and then we came back like the day after New Year's and we started January 1st and then we had two more weeks after that and then we were in tech. So it was the shortest process, but also the show was about 90 minutes long. So it wow. was so quick for such a like long production, honestly. Wow, that's crazy. That sounds but that sounds like a lot of fun, especially when you have crunch time like that. Honestly, I feel like you grow 
pretty close with the people that you work with. Mm -hmm. Um, So I can imagine, like, even though there was probably so much pressure, it had to have been extremely fun, like one of the best times, right? Oh, absolutely. It was so fun because, like, my director herself um, is B, and she um, is an adjunct professor at Temple, and I got to work with her in Creativity Basic, and then I got to see her directing the show, and I was like, oh my goodness, it's you again. And I just got to see her on such like a more personal level and it was amazing. And then like all of the other people, like these are people that are already acting and working in Philadelphia. And I not only was making bonds with them, but I was also learning so much about like their lives and the ways that they're being able to stay active and creative in whichever way possible. And yeah, I was like the second youngest member of the cast and I'm sitting here looking up at all of these people that are older than me and I'm like, you guys are like my best buds. <laughs> <laughs> but that's like such an amazing takeaway. Like all the lessons that you might have learned, you know, from all these people who've had like a lot of experience, you know, that's that's got to be something really like that's a cool takeaway. You mm-hmm. know, that's awesome. I, I appreciate that a lot. <laughs> but uh, I know we asked you about uh, your favorite temple production that you've attended. But obviously, I got to ask, what's your favorite temple production that you've been in? Um, let's see. Uh, I want to say that my favorite was also kind of through, uh, Philadelphia Young Playwrights. They work with Temple that does, um, the New Voices, uh, play festival. And I got to be in one of those shows my sophomore year. And that was beyond one of my favorites. But I also got to do one over Zoom called Plants and Other Growing Things, um, this year. And I think that that was just very interesting, but also definitely one of my favorite productions that I've gotten to be a part of. Um, It was hard to do everything over Zoom, but it's such a big ensemble piece, and it was so well written that I just felt like it was so active, and I almost forgot that it was like a Zoom show at some points, which is really cool. I mean, if you're able to forget that it's a Zoom show, that's incredible. That means you did it right, because (laughs) every time I'm on Zoom, I always am thinking my camera's on. (laughs) <laughs> and so that thought never goes away for me at least so to have something as special as a show like that where you can just be like this is fun this is a great production that's sick <laughs> that's so cool i i'm looking to figure out how to do that when i'm in class but you know what <laughs> maybe i should just do theater again who knows i'm kidding i don't know if that's gonna happen um that's awesome. So how does something like that, like a, a Zoom show, I kind of talked to Sarah about it because she was a part of one, um, which was fantastic, by the way. And um, it seems like the process of it is really, I don't know, like, I, how do you go ahead and even go about something like that, you know? It's, it's so different from when you're doing everything in person, like... I think even the point of attack for a lot of people is really different because you're not looking at like, oh, what do I want it to look like to the entire audience? It's like, what do I want it to look like on these four different boxes or however many boxes that there are? So I think it was cool because it was a much more like collaborative process than I've ever been a part of for like a very long time because it was a lot of like, well, what are you seeing on your end? And what do you think is actually working? What do you think is not working? So I think that it just kind of opened up a lot of dialogue between like us and the director about like, we all don't really know what's happening and we all want this to make sure that it looks good. So let's work together in this entire process so we can make something great. That's insane. That's that's cool. If you can come together and do something like that, that's really neat. Props props to you guys. That's really that's really neat. Um but enough of this theater talk. Honestly, theater's cool and all. Um you know, I'm I'm a fan of theater, musical theater. It's fun, whatever. Um but, you know, that's not that's not as interesting as this next question. Um I hear uh that you know, you work at Starbucks. So I, do. I, I think I I think I want to know What's your favorite drink? Oh, my goodness. I had to do it. I had to do it. I'm I'm glad you did, honestly. Um, My favorite drink to make or my favorite drink just, like, in general? Both. (laughs) Let's see. Um, I... Hmm, this one is so hard. I don't know why, but like every single day I go into work, I'm like, ooh, what do I want to try out today? I don't know yet. Um, Let's see. I think that my favorite drink to make, and this one is kind of cheesy, and Sarah, please don't laugh at me, but it's an iced caramel macchiato. 
because it is such a pretty drink when you're like finished with it that I'm just like, ooh, this is beautiful. I don't like caramel <laughs> macchiatos, but I think that they look really cool. <laughs> okay, I do have to agree with you on that. I, I it's basic to drink, but to it make, is. I'm like, I'm like, ooh, look at mm-hmm. this! Wow. <laughs> I know. I'm like, this is a pretty accomplishment. I love it. <laughs> hey, it may it may be simple, but it 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 do kind of slap though. It kind of mm-hmm. it's basic, but I kind of like it. I'm not gonna lie. But but then, what's your favorite go to order? Let's see. I bounce between hot and cold drinks a lot. But if I'm getting a hot drink, then I get a white mocha with four pumps of hazelnut. I always get a grande because I am a child and cannot drink anything bigger than a grande. (laughs) But also I'm a caffeine addict, so I do not get a tall, but I get a grande white mocha with blonde shots of espresso, hazelnut, whipped cream, and then chocolate powder on top. And then the cold one it's it's the opposite <laughs> so no whipped cream though <laughs> got it got it what's the most insane order you've ever had anyone like or because i feel like some people well, i just saw this meme the other day where it was like people at starbucks really be like i'm gonna get a grande hexagon quartermeister with a little bit of caffeine from the i i don't even know i was just reading it was just a bunch of words and i was like i could see that has anyone had just such an insane order where it just sounded like complete gibberish to you Oh, absolutely. And my store does a lot of mobile orders, so they don't even have to come in and show their faces when they're ordering all of these things. Oh, my and God. This oh my God was... that's... <laughs> they don't have to show their faces. <laughs> and this was all happening, like, during my training, too. So I was like, this is a prank. Somebody's doing this. Somebody, <laughs> uh-uh. But they it's had ordered something, and the sticker was literally about this long. What? And I looked at it, and I was like, but what is the drink? And at the top, it was like an iced dopio espresso. And if you don't know what that is, that's literally just two shots of espresso. And then they said, add every different syrup that we have. This is what I want on the top of it. This, 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 and this, and this. And I was like, okay, here we go. I looked at like the two (laughs) people I was training with and I was like, somebody else wants to make this right. And they're like, nope, go ahead. This is all you. I was like, dang. No. And then the guy came to pick it up and was like, hmm, okay. And I was like, so what's wrong with it? <laughs> Sir, what could you possibly oh want? What else? <laughs> oh, my gosh. People are so extra. Just get a black coffee and go. It's easy. <laughs> Come on, people. Ugh. Oh, my gosh. I can't handle those orders. It takes me, like, three minutes just to simply read it. I'm like, I, I just have to sit here and figure out what it is I'm trying to even make. I'm like... Oh my gosh. I mean, exactly. I I know someone that requests a flat lid instead of a dome specifically. And I don't, is there a difference? Does it really yeah. Matter? Well, the dome lid is the thing that goes on top of like the Frappuccinos or like the things that have the whipped cream piled up to the top. But right. a flat lid. I mean, yeah, <laughs> sure. I mean, a flat lid is like we, it's like what we used to have before we went strawless. It's just like the thing where you put the straw in. Right. But like now, now it's just like the sip lid. So I'm like, eh, it is what it is. It's just a lid. <laughs> I just feel like that's uh, like the person that I know their order, like they specifically need the flat sip lid and not the dome. Why? Sure. <laughs> it's just, just all right. Cool. Sounds good. Whatever you want, I guess. And then whenever they mess it up, she's always like, "I'm pissed." And it's like, I, I don't know why. It's still coffee, right? I, I hope. Um. Yeah. That's yeah. Starbucks. What a place. I've never worked there, but man, it seems like a hassle to work there. I've I've known a couple of people that have worked there, but yeah. It's so fun. I love I love working at Starbucks. I love it. Thank you for my job, Mr. Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Starbucks. <laughs> nice. All right. Uh anyway, so I hear that you have been pretty much almost all of the states on the East Coast, but never in a plane? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Is that a fear of flying or is that just like you never had the opportunity or never really had? Yeah, to? I've just never had the opportunity to. Um, I have four siblings and mm. um, getting on I a plane relate to you there. Yeah, <laughs> getting on a plane with all of them is expensive. Yeah. So instead of doing that, we do a lot of just driving. Nice. Which is great in theory. Yeah. But other than that. <laughs> 
I can understand. Are you, since it's five kids, are you oldest, youngest, somewhere in the middle? I am the second to youngest. So there's one below me and then three above me. So. Okay, got it. I was going to say I'm the youngest of five. So oh, I, wow. I have, I have all older brothers, no sisters. I have one brother and then the rest are sisters and he is the middle child. So wow. <laughs> sorry. Oh, <dude>. no. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Every time I say that people are just like, man, your poor mother. And I'm just like, poor mother. She loves us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I can understand. She, I don't know if they ever wanted a girl, but sorry. They never got one. Um, <laughs> It's fine. It happens. Oh, guys, we're supportive. Uh, but out of all the states that you've been on the East Coast, which has been your favorite to visit? Mm, um, Let's see. I mean, I want to say Florida just because I was only down there so I could go to Disney World. Oh, and then yes. I left Florida directly after that. So I think Florida at this point. <laughs> nice. Have you been just only south like East Coast or have you been north as well? I'm trying to go up more north. I mean, like, Pennsylvania is, I think, basically the most north that I've gotten. Yeah, but it's basically been a lot of south. Like, my brother used to play baseball a lot, so we had a lot of um, different, like, tournaments and whatnot in the south and everything. And then right. I've also been to New York, too. So Right, yeah. I mean, who hasn't been to New York? Yeah. <laughs> if you're from the PA area, you've been to New York. So, yeah, no, for real. If you ever get the chance, go to Vermont. That is such an underrated state on the East Coast. Like, super underrated. Or wait, is that technically on the East Coast? Yeah, it's on the East Coast. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I've been, I've been going to Vermont East? for, like, 15 years. Why do I even need to question that? Vermont is awesome. Um... It's super underrated because it's so chill. Like, there is not a lot of noise, and you're basically just in the mountains. You're just like, what? This is great. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. So that's my recommendation. But, yeah, so all driving. Yeah. Oof. I can imagine five kids, two parents packed into a car or just a, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. But hey, at least, at least you got to go to Disney. That's the, this, that's yeah, true. That's, that's, that's the true. only thing I mean, that matters. I would, I would have braved that just so I could see Mickey Mouse. I'd be <laughs> like, all right, let's go. Let's go. Oh, but I can understand the pain of being in a car for that long with too many people oh absolutely <laughs> <laughs> i can totally understand it it can get a hassle sometimes that's it happens though it happens mm -hmm. um but now for the most exciting thing i hear that you wrote a play that is being produced in march i what? did <laughs> that is awesome tell us more about it yeah, um, so I wrote a play called JJ. Um, it's about two women who are living in Philadelphia, but there is a robbery that happens next door to one of the women's houses. And um, they're dating. It goes through their relationship um, problems, some of, like, racial traumas, and just kind of looks a little bit more in depth about, like, what truth actually means and what that means to different people. So right. it's going up March sixth and seventh at seven o'clock p.m on wow. zoom which is great and i'm working with such an amazing team not just like in the production team itself like i have an amazing director and dramaturg and stage manager but i also have an amazing team of producers cough sarah cough maddie um yeah they have just been so supportive and everybody in this process is just making it feel like it's such a fun time that is awesome that's so cool so everyone, it's tickets, right? People have to get tickets, and then it, they get the Zoom link pretty yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> get your tickets, people. This is going to be an awesome show. I've heard so many great things about it. Get your tickets now. It's going to be sick. March 6th and 7th, right? That's what you said? Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. March 6th and 7th, get your tickets. It's going to be awesome. All right. I think we have reached the point in our interview where we like to play our game. So we have a little game. All it is right. it is this or that, but it's Temple Edition. Ooh, so, okay. <laughs> so we basically are going to give you a list of things to choose from, which I believe, what, 15, 14, 12, 12 different things? I don't know. So about, about 12 different things to choose from. And you just got to pick. Sounds pretty simple, right? Yeah, but, I think so. Oh. But you... you 
you do have the choice to explain, and you only have a minute. So some things may be a little harder than others. We've had four people successfully get through all the questions in a minute, and I think... This is our 14th episode, so it's hard for some for a lot of people. It's uh it's pretty difficult. But if you I, I liked what uh we interviewed um we interviewed Richie Devon last episode and I liked what he said. He said at the end, I'm a very opinionated person and I shouldn't be, and that's why I'm good at this. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> nice. <laughs> I was like, nice. So if you are an opinionated person, I guess, then this should be no problem. All right. <laughs> All right. So, Sarah, you are going to take lead on giving the choices, and I'm going to have a timer up and running here. So, whenever you are ready. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, go. The sack or food trucks? Uh, food trucks. <laughs> Richie's or Saxby's? Richie's. <laughs> Ritter or rehearsal hall? Ritter. <laughs> Wawa or 7-Eleven? 7-Eleven. Don't hate me for that. <laughs> I'm Act- from Maryland. I'm from Maryland. Continue. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Acting or directing? Acting. Charles or Paley? Charles. I've never been inside Paley. <laughs> Monologue or scene? Scene. <laughs> Arranging music or singing it? Ah, uh, Singing. <laughs> <laughs> Tomlinson, Tomlinson or Randall? Randall. Stage managing a play or stage managing a musical? A play. J or H? H. I don't know. <laughs> Film or theater? Theater. Drama or comedy? Drama. That we is made one it. second <gasps> left. We made Yes. Wow. Oh That's my incredible. goodness. Although you're not off the hook yet. 7 Eleven? Yes. <laughs> what? I, I am a 7 Eleven rewards member. I get so yes. much stuff for free at 7 Eleven. Are you kidding me? It's so nice because I'll be like running low, low on money and I'm like, wait, 7 Eleven has my back. I don't see a Wawa <laughs> on the campus. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's fair. But. If if we're going to go off of terms of food, just food that's provided, <laughs> what would you say? Just food. Yeah. I'll go with Wawa then. Okay, yeah, there you go. There you go. All right, so technically your answer was Wawa. We're oh, gonna, okay. We're yeah. going <laughs> to say that you said Wawa, and we're going to ignore that you even said 7-Eleven. All right, all right. Uh, <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Hey, I just got to set the record straight. Am I right? I got (laughs) to set the record straight. Well, anyway, I think that does it for today. Danny, thank you so much for coming on. You've been such a pleasure to talk to. Thank you so much for having me again. It's been so fun. Absolutely. Absolutely. As always, I would like to thank my co-host, Sarah. Uh, Without Sarah, we would not be able to do these shows. Uh, She's the backbone to everything that we do. So, Sarah, thank you very much. Thank you, guys. It's been so much fun. (laughs) <laughs> With that said, make sure you guys get your tickets to uh, Danny's play, JJ. It's going to be awesome. March 6th and 7th. Definitely, you know, check give out yourself the Ben Vargas Shortstop Festival. It's going Woo-hoo. to be super cool. Check it out. As always, you can find us on social medias uh, at CPCA underscore advising. That's where you can keep up to date with anything related to Backstage Pass podcast or just anything in the CPCA advising in general. With that said, it's Friday. I'm going to enjoy my weekend, and I hope you all do too. We will see you next week.